Well, hello everyone and welcome. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance and a little wrenching on the old Tucson. We're going to be changing the brakes on my 2016 Tucson today. So hang around and let's get started. Alright guys, so here we are. I lifted up the front of the car. I don't think you guys need to see how to lift up a car. I'm pretty sure you all know how to do that if you're taking on uh, maintenance on your vehicle by yourself. So basically, this is the front caliper right here. I'm going to shoot one of the front and one of the back. That way you know exactly how each one of them goes. And this pretty much should be uh, standardized across all Hyundai models for the most part. As I understand it from the dealership, most Hyundais are about the same. So whether you're dealing with a Tucson or a Santa Fe or a Sonata or a Elantra, any of those, it's going to be pretty much the same procedure. Very simple. The front is going to be pretty much the same all the way across the board. The back may be a little bit different if you have, depending on whether you have electronic parking brake or manual parking brake. This vehicle has manual parking brake, so I'll show you that when we get there. So let's get started on this right now. You got to remove a couple of bolts, one up here, one down here, and they're 14 millimeters, so let's get started on that. And that just comes right out. You see how easy that comes right out? No problem whatsoever. So then we take this puppy out of here. And there you go. We get the caliper off of there. The caliper is not too bad. A little bit of rusty dirtiness on the inside, but it's not really bad. I'll clean that up in just a moment. But you can see it's a little dirty on the inside. That doesn't affect your braking or anything, just a lot of dirt collecting in there. So I'm going to clean that up in a minute. And these are where the pads are right there. Put your caliper somewhere where it will not fall off. And then let's take a look at these guys right here. Take the little clips off of it. These are what help it to spring back and forth so they don't get locked up in place. And take it out. And you may need to press a little tab here to get it out because it does have little tabs on it. Let me show you right here. It has these little tabs on it right here at the end that hold it in place on both sides. So you need to make sure that you press those down to get it off. There you go. And that's the old pad right there. And here's the new pad that we're going to put on it. And you can see right there the difference between the old and the new, how much uh, meat they have left on it, whether it's new or old. It's gone down considerably, not to the end of it, but it's uh, about time to do it. So that's what we're doing it right now. So let's get started on this. Let me get the other one out and clean this up a little bit. And again, you got to press down that little tab on the back, which I can't really see, so I'm feeling around for it. And there you go. That's the one from the back pulled out. And this one has the wear indicator on it. Make sure that you follow the procedure when you put it back. The wear indicator has to be on the top and on the inside part. So make sure you look at the brakes. When you take them out, do one side at a time. Don't do them both. That way you don't get them confused. So this guy has to go this way with the wear indicator on top on the inside part. And then the outside part does not have the wear indicator. So make sure you follow that when you put it back in. Let's put them back in. Let's clean this up a little bit first. All right, a little bit of brake cleaner. Let's get this guy cleaned up a bit. Get a container underneath so you don't make a big mess and start cleaning it up. And there you go. Now we dry this puppy up and we should be good to put him back in. There.
there you go that takes care of cleaning that that should be all fine now now let's put the clips back in and you can either use all new hardware or you could use the old one whatever makes you comfortable but it does come the kit that i bought does come with all new hardware so it's smart just to use the new stuff so we put all this back in here and it should just snap back into place As you see, the new hardware just snaps right in place. So that's easy enough right there. And like I said previously, this procedure should apply to any Hyundai, but for certain it'll apply to Tucson 2016 and newer, because this is a 2016, so pretty much everything after this should be the same, until they went to the new body in 2019, 20, something like that. I don't know how those brakes are. But like I say, Hyundai doesn't like to make a lot of changes. And be sure to clean these little springs that come with it so you can reuse them. The kit that I got from O'Reilly's did not bring these little springs. I don't know why. Maybe they don't think it's important. You can reuse the old ones. Not a big deal. In fact, if you get brakes that don't have hardware, you can reuse the old hardware. I know some people are going to say you shouldn't, but you know what? Sometimes if you don't have it, you don't have it. You got to reuse the old ones. That's the way it goes. And like I said, this guy by right here, this guy with the wear indicator goes on the inside part. Let's clip this guy in here. And make sure before you put these guys in, make sure that these pins move in and out freely if they don't then take them out clean them and lubricate them they seem to move just fine i don't see any real problem with them this one wants to pull in a bit more than the other one i don't know why but it seems to move freely anyway maybe i'll take this out and clean it up and lubricate it a bit before i well i'm at it right here there you go actually it doesn't look all that bad it looks perfectly fine so I don't know why that was hanging up a tiny little bit there, but I'll just add a little bit of grease to it. Just a little dab of general purpose grease. The one I'm using is actually for brakes, but you can use any kind of grease you want. I suggest using the ones for brakes and bearings and stuff like that. That'll be a whole lot better for you. Grease this up a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it because then it'll get packed in there and may give you some trouble. So a little bit of grease and just pop it back in there. Clean off the head on that. You know, check out the bottom one since I'm already at it. And the bottom one looks okay, a little dirty. Nothing too major. Clean it off a little bit. Add some new clean grease to it. Since it's on the bottom, it probably collects a bit more dirt. All right, there you go. Put a little bit of grease on it. Not too much. You know, don't, don't lather it on there. You're not uh, going crazy with it. Just a little bit so it'll move in and out freely. And that should be fine. Just move it back and forth. Make sure it's all okay. And you should be fine. There you go. And now they move freely. There you go. Now let's put the calipers back in there. Now all you got to do in case you don't know is put this little foot right here inside the little hardware there and you'll be fine. It just slips right in. There you go. That's the inside one there. Now the outside one is the exact opposite of that. Slip it in here. Again, put the little foot right there. 
Put the other little foot up here. Slips right in. And there you go. Now you got the two calipers in place. Now all we got to do is I'm going to clean up the piston a little bit. And then we're going to push that back in. For that, I use a C-clamp. You can use whatever method you like. And be sure to put these little springs back on before you forget. That way, you don't assemble everything and forget to put these guys back in. There you go. See how these guys are meant to basically spread out the calipers so they don't get stuck in there. There you go. Those springs are back in place. Everybody can move freely now. And that's the whole point to prevent them from sticking. Very simple indeed. Now the caliper, like I said, is a bit dirty, so I'm gonna clean it off a little bit. A little bit of brake cleaner, and I should take care of this guy. And if you have shop air, it makes it a whole lot easier. I'm not gonna take the time to load up my compressor just for that, so I use my little shop vacuum that I have. A little blower vacuum kind of thing that I have there. These little guys come in really, really handy. Really, really handy for doing all sorts of stuff. See how now the piston is a whole bunch cleaner, much better to put it back together when it's all cleaner instead of all dirty inside there. So that's much, much better right there. And what we do now is basically, let me get this set up. What you're gonna do is make sure that you have the cap off the master cylinder, because you're gonna push the piston back in and that's gonna push some fluid back into the master cylinder. So be sure you have it uncapped so you don't have any built up pressure in there. All right, so here you go. Let me move this up a little bit so it's easier for you to see there. I have the caliper up here. All I'm doing is putting a C-clamp on there and pushing it back in. And there you go. Push it back in until it stops, and that's it. You don't have to go crazy bananas on this. You're just trying to get it back to its starting point. That's all there is to it. Then undo the C-clamp and take it out. Now, you just slide this puppy back over these guys. And you may have to compress them because they're pushing out because of the springs. And there you go. Now we just put the two nuts back up in here, get the holes lined up. And again, you don't have to go crazy over tightening this stuff. Just tighten it up until it's snug. And click, we're down to factory specs. There you go. Uh, click, there you go. Torque to factory specs. And this guy is good to go. 
And if you want to give it a little extra helping of cleaning, you want to make it look nice and shiny and clean. And then just dry it off. And there you go. And there you go. We just finished one of the front end. I'll move on to the other one. I'm not going to film that one. I'll film it once we move on to the back one. It will continue from there. So one out of four already done. Let's continue. And you saw how easy that was. So you see, it's very easy. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Simple enough to do. Let's move on. All right, guys, so we did the front ones already. Let's move on to doing the rear brakes right now. So this vehicle does not have the electronic or automatic parking brake. This one has the manual parking brake, which is in here. So therefore, it does not affect your brake work whatsoever. The pads are not part of the parking brake on this vehicle. They're inside here. It has some shoes inside here. We're not going to worry about that today. That's not a problem. So this is simple, pretty much just like the front. But there are a couple of little tricks and tips that I'll teach you that I already did the other side. So I figured them out. That way I can tell you guys how to better and easier do this. First of all, you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench. Not the socket that I was using previously because there's not enough room for it. Up top here, you got plenty of room. No problem at all. On the bottom here, though, you see right here, this is the brake line right there. And Hyundai put it way too close, so it's barely any room to get in there to take that bolt off. So a socket, even a stubby one, will not fit in there. So therefore, that's what you got to use a wrench for. So that's why we need this guy and take this puppy apart right now. It's not that big a deal anyway. So uh, most of you guys, uh, the uh, DIYers are not going to have all the fancy smancy tools, so you're not going to worry about it. And by the way, I always put the tire under the vehicle just for safety reasons, but you know, that's why it's there. Not that it's required, not that you have to, I just do it for safety. I'm not under the vehicle, but I just don't want the vehicle to drop down on me, un you know, uncontrolled for some reason. You never know what happens. Something weird can happen and things can go the wrong way on you. Life can go sideways, you know how that goes. So safety is always a big thing. I have the jack holding it up over there, a jack stand on the other side of it, no big deal. All right, so this is pretty much the same as the front one. It just slips right off. Easy peasy, as you see, there's the caliper right there. We'll put that up here for the time being. We'll deal with that in a little bit. And this one has the same thing, a couple of clips here that we're gonna take off, springs, I should say. Springs that we take off, those come off right there. The little pads are pretty much the same as the front ones. So you're going to need a little screwdriver just to pry them out a little bit. And basically you're going to push against them. You're not going to push against the caliper, uh, the rotor I should say. You don't want to scratch up your rotor. But pressing against these guys doesn't matter because you're going to throw them away. Unless you have a core charge or something that you've got to take them back. But still, that doesn't matter. Like, for example, I got some brakes right now to replace these guys that are lifetime warranty. So in the future, if I ever need to, I just take the, the old ones back and they give me a brand new pair free of charge. So then you take the clips off of here and that'll pry right off. And then you put the new clips back in their place. Just like the front ones, fairly easy. That's not a big deal. So you can either use the old ones if your kit doesn't bring them for some reason. That's not a problem. Just clean them up. You can see how really gross and disgusting and dirty they get. But my kit brings them, so I have no concerns. My kit comes with the uh, stainless steel replacements, so that's not a problem for me. Let's shoot this guy with a little bit of cleanser right here and clean this guy off a bit. Not that it's really dirty or anything, it's not that bad, but uh, since we're already here, may as well do a little bit of house cleaning. And my can's starting to run out. I 
I mean, a lot of things that I'm going to do, some people might argue you don't need to do it and so forth. It's, you know, it's no big deal. What does it take me, an extra, you know, two minutes to do this? So uh, to me, it's not a big deal. You don't do your breaks every other day. So it's not like you're in a rush and you need to hurry to get it done. May as well do it right. May as well get it done. That way you can go another 50, 60, 100,000 miles without having any squeaks or rattles or anything going on back here. And everybody's happy and you'll break just fine and you have nothing to worry about. Especially you guys in the Midwest and uh, back east where you have a lot of salt and stuff on the roads. You got more stuff to worry about. I'm on the left coast so I really don't have any of that stuff to be concerned about. They don't put any salt on here on the roads. They put taxes on the roads, not salt. <laughs> they sure put a lot of road taxes, that is for sure. You would think the roads would be lined with gold with the amount of taxes that I pay on the road tax over here. But nope, nope, the roads are still 50, 60, 100 years old and they're full of potholes, just like you guys back east. So let's see. So there we go. We put that clip on there. And one thing I didn't mention is on this one, it's the opposite of the front one. This little wear indicator is at the bottom. It goes like this. So the wear indicator right here is on the bottom part of the back one. You see this one with the big circle on it, that's where the piston hits it, and that's on the back. So this one goes back there, that's that one. I forgot to mention that when I took it off. So here we have the brand new one, and then you just slip this guy in, wear indicator on the bottom, slip it in on the back over here. There you go, slip that guy in. And then the other guy on the front, this guy has no wear indicator or anything at all. You just slip it right in there, walk it in right there. That's the easiest way to do it. You just walk it in, twist it sideways, and you're good to go. That's pretty much it. This guy is all set. Now all we got to do is put the little springs on it. So there you go. Put the little springs on it. If your kit doesn't bring the springs, like it didn't bring it on the front, but on the back one, it does bring them. Kind of weird. I don't know, but that's the way it is. So here we go, put them back in there, just push them in. Same with down here, find the little holes that they belong inside of, put it in there. And there you go. And yes, these guys do stick out a little bit like that, that's perfectly normal. Look back on the video, you'll see that the ones I took out stuck out just as far as these guys. They stick out and they rest against the uh, caliper. So that's not a big deal. That's just the way they are. So let's see the caliper. Now we have to retract it. Let's clean this guy up a little bit. Bring it down here. Put the pan under here. That way we can kind of clean it a little bit. Put the pan under there and clean it up a bit. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. It's nice, nice and shiny. Actually, shinier than the one on the front. The one on the front had a bit more rust than this one does. So this one is actually very, very good condition right there. No problem at all. Clean this guy up and we're good to go. Let me dry it off. Alright, so now all we have to do is retract this little guy and here is the little trick that I'm going to teach you guys right now on how to do this because even though I have a heck of a lot of tools, I don't have a tool that's convenient for me to use right here. And some of you guys out there that are DIYers may not have as many tools as I have and you see even someone that has a lot of tools, sometimes you come up a little short. My C-clamp is way too big for this. It is about the size of this guy right here. And I can't put it through here because you see it doesn't line up. See my finger? It doesn't line up. It's normally what I prefer to do is put it straight into the middle of the bore so it pushes back nice and evenly. Here, I can't do that. It would rest on the lip right there. Here on the top, 
it would also rest on the lip. There's no way to push it in. It would go at an angle. And it's way too big. So one thing that I'm going to teach you guys, and be careful, back here, you see the way the brake line is? Make sure not to damage this. If you don't have a lot of tools and so forth, what you can do to push this guy back in is get one of the old brake shoes, put it right in here, and what you're going to do is use a caulking gun to push this guy back in. Now, I have one that is a ratcheting one. I don't know if the other ones will work, but you can use this guy without any trouble whatsoever. Let me pull this guy back. Hold on. Start off by pulling that guy back to give you plenty of room to work with. And what you do, and I know there's people out there screaming, oh no, you can't do that. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's not that bad. Now make sure back here, see how the caulking gun has an opening? You're gonna put it around this back here so you don't touch anything back here, okay? So you're gonna put it, I can't twist it any further, but you're gonna put it in a way that it doesn't touch the brake line. You're gonna put it just on the edge of that thing there. So let me, let me position this here now. And you're gonna bring this up and let's do it this way and there you go see how i have it right here and this is what it's going to push in and you have to put it back there let me get it touching you have to put it back there so it does not touch the brake line it is not touching the brake line it is right between the brake line or i should say around it and in here all you're going to do is just when you have it set there hold on to it so it doesn't slip out of your hand and make sure you don't cause any damage to the brake line back there and just slowly start squeezing. And the caulking gun has enough pressure to squeeze this guy back on its own, no problem. Once you get it going, it'll just keep on going. And there you go, I pushed it all the way back. See how that's all the way back? And I didn't cause any damage to the line back here. I didn't even scratch it because it was sitting right here on the edge right here. Depending on how you have your setup, I mean, you, maybe you could put it this way. As long as you're not damaging the line, you could stick it like that any way at all. Don't damage the line. You definitely don't want to do that. And there, you see, I pushed it all the way back in. You see that it's totally all the way back in. So a simple caulking gun will get you out of a pinch when you need it. And then all we do now is just put this guy back in. Squeeze these guys together and push this guy back in. And push the bolts in. And there you go. Now all we do is push, put the bolts back in here. And you're going to tighten these guys up by hand. Put the bottom one back in. And the brake line, you can't even adjust it. I know someone's going to say, well, why don't you move the brake line to a different position? You can't. You simply can't. Because the brake line on this one has two prongs to it. It has the brake line itself, and then it has an alignment pin that goes into a hole there. So you can't move it in any other direction. It just doesn't let you do that. So that's the way Hyundai designed it. Not a big deal. Come on. You can work around it. If I can do it, you can do it. There we go. So let's tighten this guy up. And let's see, tighten it up to factory specs and click, there we are, and uh, click, there we are. And that's it, we're done. It's torqued to factory specs. We didn't damage the line or anything, that's the way it is. This is the way it is set from the factory. You can't do anything to change that. So there you go, we just did all four bricks, at least I did. I showed you how to do two of them, the front and the back, and you saw how easy it was on this particular vehicle, 2016 or later, Hyundai Tucson's. And like I said, it should be the same for the Santa Fe, Sonata, Elantra, all those, they're pretty much the same. If you have the electronic parking brake, might be a little different. You may need to do a little research on that. I don't have that, so I don't need to worry about it. So dig into that and see what you need to do to deal with that situation. You saw exactly how easy it is to do. Now you guys can go tackle it yourself and save yourself a bundle of money by not having to pay a mechanic or the dealership. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye for now.